Hi, this is a quick demo of SonarG. SonarG is a big data system for Guardian. Uh, what it does is it gets data directly from Guardian collectors using feeds that run every hour. And it builds a big data warehouse for this data. So I'm logged into a system that's been up for about a year and a half. And you can see it's got uh, all kinds of Guardian data on it. For example, it has uh, over 11 billion full SQL statements. The entire data set is taking up about 1.6 terabytes. Um, all this data is compressed, so uh, that means it's at least 16 terabytes worth of uh, Guardium data. And it's been getting this from multiple uh, collectors uh, spread out around the world. Different times, um, uh, 200 collectors were sending data sometimes uh, 20 collectors. Um, it's running on a single VM, uh, this one specifically on Amazon AWS, on an M4 4 extra large, uh, but it can run on-prem or in the cloud or on various clouds. Um, so the first thing that you see within SonarG is that it's very easy to get at data. For example, I can access data about uh, what's happening since July but and, and and get all the information but at the same time I could also uh, go and grab data all the way back for example since uh, January 2016 so almost a year and a half ago um, and I get the same type of response time uh, same thing with uh, even very very large data sets so if I want to uh, grab full SQL statements and get the data from, um, say, May 2016. Uh, I can in enter all kinds of filters, uh, certain server IPs, certain users. Uh, I get all of the uh, Guardian Group data. So, for example, I can run and look at uh, uh, DDL commands, DCL commands, DML commands. Everything is synced directly from the Guardian environment so that I don't have to maintain all this. Um, and I get here all the SQL statements as they're being sent and collected from Guardian. Um, there are multiple data sets that, that get um, brought in from Guardian. So there's session data, and query data, and exception data, but also non-DAM data like our vulnerability assessment data, classifier scans, data source information, etc. Um, and these are grouped into all kinds of reports that are uh, very easy to use. You can use a self-service type approach. So instead of uh, the Guardian admins being responsible for delivering the reports, uh, you can have auditors logging into directly into SonarG and you can give them a portal where they can access only their information. And there's also a uh, data level security system within SonarG so you can specify that certain users should only be able to see uh, certain data and others that could see only their servers, etc. Um, there are all kinds of dashboards, um, you know, both operational dashboards as well as um, uh, data dashboards. So, for example, here you'd see all of the inactive STAPs and how many times they've been down and which STAPs are reporting to which collectors and what inspection engines are defined on the system. Uh, you have things like gap analysis uh, where the system will flag you, flag when um, an STAP is green but data is not being collected, which is often a problem. Um, so for example here, and it does this using analytics, it's not doing this by trying to say the STAP is uh, saying something. Uh, you can see here that um, uh, this is a Sybase server, for example, uh, the average number of connections that are coming, that have come in over the last 10 days is about a thousand connections per day, but in the last 24 hours there have been none. Um, so it, it could be that there are no connections, but more likely there's some problem with this STAP. And you can see that uh, the, the STAP is actually sh uh, showing active, and over the last 24 hours, the, the times that it has been inactive is zero. So this is a case where um, the STAP is showing green, 
but 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 there's no data coming in. Um, this is a slightly different case. This this says it's not completely zero, uh, but on average we expect to see a thousand connections per day. In the last 24 hours, there've been only 300, and you can define your thresholds over here to say, um, you know, how what kind of a decline in in observed data you have, and this is all an example of. Uh, the different engines that run within SonarG. So SonarG is, is really an analytic system. It uses the fact that you have uh, so much history and so much data. You know, usually people hold uh, at least a year, or 13 months, sometimes three years worth of Guardian data on a single uh, SonarG system, and, and and they address both their compliance requirements for long-term retention and their operational requirements in the sense that they don't need to do archiving and risk the fact that they ever have to go and bring the archive files back, which is a very, very labor-intensive exercise. But at the same time, since you have all this data, uh, you have all these analytic engines, like a noise-canceling engine, which allows you to, for example, pass less information into the sim than all the raw data, so that SonarG will deduplicate the data and pass only the relevant material events into the sim or into the big data lake, uh, the generic lake. There's a profiling engine where you can do trusted connection analysis, sliding window analysis, um, as well as that uh, gap analysis that I showed you on the STAPs. There's a machine learning engine that, that identifies outliers, and the advantage is that since you have all this history, you have a lot of this information, Doing outlier analysis is very, very precise, um, and 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 so, for example, uh, the whole idea is it's it's user behavioral analysis. It looks at uh, what users have been doing over the last six months, and um, it flags kind of a high level risk uh, based on an unsupervised machine learning algorithm. So, for example, if you look at uh, this DB2 admin user on this database sample on this IP address, it's been flagged as a session daily activity, meaning uh, that on, on uh, December 5th, uh, there seemed to be a huge spike compared to other uh, days. And you can see this kind of here, where, um, um, you know, if I look at the number of connections open in that time frame, uh, you can see on average there were, you know, on this day there were 2988, then 2952, then 2983, and then suddenly there was a spike to almost 50,000 connections. Um, so there's something very different going on. And you can see here where you look at the number of standard deviations away from the mean. You know, normally it's almost zero, meaning the data is very, very predictable. But suddenly in that day, you got the seven standard deviations away. So this is just one example. We have things like box plot analysis, where if I look at this, all the users are clustered down here, but some of these users are behaving way differently. Um, I can drill down and see the relationship between these outliers. Um, I can look at the tree maps, which allow you to identify in a very visual way kind of where most of your problem resides. Um, and, and you know, there, there's a lot of facilities here to, uh, to use the engine to, to view outliers. Um, there's also a very quick uh, ad hoc uh, view of the data. So for example, uh, let me look at uh, exceptions. And let me look at exceptions in the last uh, 30 days of the system. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking at all exceptions that have come in through Guardian in the last month. And you can see there's about 17 million of them. And this is a uh, histogram showing me kind of when the, the vast majority of these exceptions are. And each exception is shown down here exactly kind of which client it came from, uh, what the database name was, uh, what the server was, uh, you know, what is it? It's a SQL error. Um, you have things like what is the SQL that caused the exception? 
It's all the normal information you get from Guardian, but in a way that allows you to just look at it and really understand it really, really quickly. So as an example, um, let me look at, uh, let me do an analysis and get, get all of the uh, DB usernames that have been creating these errors. And you can see almost all the errors are coming from a user called QA. And then there's a few from root and a few from RDS admin. Um, so what I'll do is I'll filter out all the exceptions that come from QA. So I'll just click on that um, to exclude everything from QA. So you can see out of the 17 million, almost all of them come from QA. So I'm, I'm kind of dismissing that because I believe that's just a test system. Um, and now I'm looking at real errors. And, and I'm looking at this and oh, almost all of them have come in on that day. So let me double click on this bar and zero in on that day. So now I can see it's, it, it ha all the exceptions happen between um, kind of uh, 5 p.m. and midnight. So something's going on um, after hours, um, but it's still kind of hard. There's still about 1,800. But if I do, uh, I, I, can, I can ask the system to reduce the noise. And so what it did was it take these 1,800 events and reduced it to one, two, three, four, five events. Now I can really look at what's going on. I can say, uh, you know, show me the exception description for each one and how many times they occur. So you can see out of the 1,800, right, 961 are this. And maybe then what I'll do is I'll add the SQL string that caused the exception and the type ID. So I can see there's 107 uh, login failed, and another 25, and another 168 login failed. So there's a lot of login failed events in that time frame. And then in terms of the SQL, I'm looking at this. I'm seeing, you know, select star from does not exist too. Select star from does not exist one. So this looks actually fine. This also looks kind of like a like some kind of test system, uh, or, in, or in this particular case, it is a QA run. Um, so I'm all good. So it's just an example showing you how easy it is to work with the data um, and, and, and just having uh, a handle directly on the system while preserving the fact that everything is still based on understanding the Guardian data. So, you know, I could search on things like DDL commands. So it's not a keyword search, but a more, more complex search. Um, and then again, there's all kinds of other analytic systems um, that, you know, I, I can go into SQL error offenders and do an analysis since, say, uh, May 1st. So it's about uh, two and a half months worth of data. What it's going to do is it's going to uh, uh, analyze all of my SQL error events and combine them together and, and, and by, by what type they are and, and server they are, the user is generating them, um, plus it will sort them. Uh, so you can see out of, out of these two and a half months, 50 million of them are against the server. And it's always an Aura 942, so its table does not exist. And then it breaks me, give me a breakdown of where it's coming from and who the user is. Um, and then the next one down is only 30,000. So, you know, this is kind of the wall of shame for SQL errors. If I want to fix my environment, I can just go and address them one by one, rather than, for example, if I just looked at exceptions, um, and I said, you know, show me all the exceptions since uh, May 1st, I would get this data, but this is raw data. Now I have to go and, and, and look at uh, millions of events as opposed to the other uh, report that gave me a consolidated view uh, based on the ability of Sonaji to crunch all this data and understanding the database activity uh, data as a whole.